without a crystal ball welcome back to my channel we're gonna start today and talk about an issue that is important to me and one that I think you guys need to hear all about we talk a lot about fundies on this channel we cover the Duggars the sister wives the Bates all kinds of different groups we've talked about a very a variety of different organizations that have practices that in place that are not that are detrimental to children to w women and to men Part of my passion on this channel is to help people to have a voice, to bring attention to things that maybe are hidden that we need to know more about. And today we're gonna to talk about something that's going on in Missouri that relates to something I talked to you about a couple weeks ago, and this is all because of that video. A couple weeks ago, I did a video on Paris Hilton, and she's gonna have a documentary coming out called This Is Paris. Paris is gonna start talking about her time at a boarding school in Utah where she was sent because she was a troubled teen. This has sort of opened up a wider dialogue with my subscribers about whether or not they had experience with this. I asked that question in that video and received a message from a girl, a woman named Amanda. Amanda reached out to me and she said, my parents run an organization called Circle of Hope in Missouri. This place needs to be shut down. Circle of Hope is a boarding school for young women that is located in Missouri. It is the ranch is been founded in 2006 by Boyd and Stephanie Householder is a place for refer reformation through the Bible. That's right. This is a family that is part of the IFB. Yep, the same IFB that the Duggars are a part of, the Independent Fundamentalist Baptists. Boyd and Stephanie, according to Amanda, got into this industry after they began to after they were working in this industry and decided to open their own house. After they worked as house parents at several other boarding schools, the two of them decided they were gonna open their own house, but for girls. According to their website, the Circle of Hope, according to the Circle of Hope's websites, they say that girls come from all walks of life and some have been doing all kinds of really bad things. The goal is to help young ladies who are destroying their lives through poor choices and behaviors change their future. They have been described as uncontrollable girls who won't let their parents help them, and we use the Bible to teach them that they are the only their parents and the authority over them. We understand that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only answer and the only hope that these girls have to change their life. And I have a different have a different future. That is why you have them read their Bible every morning. We have them doing devotions, prayer time with them every evening and attend a Baptist church in, Spring, in Springfield, Missouri every time the doors are open. They say it's a boarding school that admits students of any race, color, nation, ethnicity, and origin to any rights of privileges or people who are have no privileges to people that are wealthy. They say that they do activities, they are supposed to offer school, and apparently they use the Bible to teach you how to be a better person. Now, the problem here is that some of the girls that are sent here have serious issues, like mental health issues, and they're struggling. They might be coming from a background where they have trauma. They might be coming from a background where they were adopted and they are dealing with the attachment issues that come with adoption. They could just be a girl that didn't fit into the mold of their highly religious family. Amanda, their daughter, who's 29, is actually speaking out against this and she wants them shut down. What? Are you serious? She wants them shut down? Yes. Today I had the opportunity to sit down with Amanda about her parents and about why it's important for this organization to shut down. Amanda worked with her parents at this at Circle of Hope Branch for years, and she says that her parents are using this facility as a way to harm girls in a multitude of ways, and they offer little to no counseling or help, and the girls are left with more issues than when they come. She claims the women are, the girls are isolated from their families. They are worked out way over. She claims that her dad has an interesting method in order to help these girls. And I'm going to show you a few of the things that she had to say about her parents. Your dad opens the girls school. Okay. And at the girls school, he picks the girls because he can 
control them and have his way with them. Okay, so how many girls are at this school when he opens this in 2006? Like how many times, how many pa patients are coming in when he's doing this? The first day, um, three girls. Um, it started with three girls. I don't remember when girls, more girls started coming in, but it got big pretty fast. Cause three and it grows really fast. Yeah, I would say um, about 15 after two months. Okay. Um, and how long are the girls staying there? Some girls are meant to stay. Oh, the contract is signed for two years. Um, a lot of girls were were there for four years. A lot of girls didn't even leave until they were 20, 21. Okay. And it's touted as a, a faith-based, basically reform school to help girls become more godly and better people. Yes, that's exactly basically what their website said. It says they use the Bible to, um, I, I don't remember if it's to train, um, but to change the girl in a godly way. Um, but the Bible is like in gigantic letters. So yes, it is, it's a faith-based school that is meant to help them but it really honestly just brain brainwashes them and, and the girls that are coming in have backgrounds of trauma adoption um i'm guessing mental health issues and so their parents are sending them there do the parents think that they're going there they're going to get better do they have any idea that this is what they're sending their child to no most parents are honestly just now finding out um, in 2007, a mother sent her daughter there, and her daughter, I think, was only there for three months. I, she wasn't there that long, but she took her out on her ver first visit because she just got this feeling of it being wrong. And she's honestly the first parent that ever contacted CPS. Um, all of her documentation and stuff is out on the internet um, still, and that was in 2007. So in, within the first year, he's got reports for not treating these girls correctly yeah. they like for these girls um so they have a shirt system um it's completely changed since i've left but when i was there it was a yellow uh orange shirt was the lowest yellow shirt pink shirt green shirt and then purple shirt the purple shirts are the highest ranking and so the highest ranking shirts had to wake up at like five o'clock in the morning take their showers um, and then get the rest of the girls up. And then the girls would all like get ready, go outside, do housework. Um, this house that they got was the, the man who owned it was a hoarder. So for years, like even years after I left, they were removing junk. So like it was hard labor. Um, and that would happen for the first year and a half. I'd say that's all we did. There was no school, no school happened. Um, they're supposed to be going to school, but they're not offering school. No. And, and what kind can't... of, what kind of, like, if they're all they're doing is working, what kind of help to actually deal with their issues? The Bible. So that's how they're, the answer is the Bible. Literally, you read the Bible. And then if you want counseling, uh, my dad started this thing where you can, I, like, fill out a counseling sheet. But honestly, the, he denied a lot of girls counseling because he didn't like them um but then when they would do the counseling it was just praying and reading the bible together and just pulling what god could give you out of the scriptures so how is he teaching them or helping them in any way he's not he's not he's not at all and what is he charging these parents for this while i was there it went based off of their um their what they could pay so my parents would look at their bank statements uh, one mom, the first mom who actually contacted CPS, she was paying, I think, $1,500 a month. And my parents made her pay $5,000 up front because once they read her bank statements, they knew she had money. And a lot of other parents didn't have money. And so they were like, we need your money, $500 up front, $1,500 a month. Um, so it honestly, it just depended. But they also get funding from churches. From the state? From churches, not the state. Oh, okay. Okay. So they get like grants and stuff from this, the churches for this. So are your parents, yeah, so they, you know, are your parents able to live comfortably doing this? 
You know, when I was there, it never seemed like it. But now uh, people have said, like, my dad would get cars monthly. Um, when you pull up their taxes, uh, they make almost $400,000 a year. And their assets are like $800,000. So, so your, they parents, do your parents are making a lot of money under the guise that they are treating girls but are offering them no treatment and are just going to the Bible and using um, restraint and physical corporal punishment. Is this common there? Younger girls did get corporal punishment. Um, by that point, I was in charge of the kitchen, so I never witnessed it, but I heard it because the kitchen was under my dad's office and i know what his spankings felt like and i could hear i heard it um other girls were in the room because he would have witnesses um also like extreme workouts um girls were put in push-up position all day like all day long um and when i say you're restrained you're restrained for hours there were there were um there was a day that we were told to restrain two sisters side by side and that went on for an hour and 45 minutes um, girls were made to walk around like ducks. So like waddling around, fla um, flapping their arms, going quack, quack all day. Um, just insane workouts. Um, and I he's also, so he's doing these physical workouts, I'm guessing, because it's of the school of belief. If you're like working out, you're strengthening your body for God or whatever it is. He was in the Marine Corps. He was a drill instructor okay. in the Marine Corps. So he, it's, it's like a military boot camp. Okay. So he puts them in a boot camp. He's going to just like train them into discipline, basically. Basically, yeah. So how does all of this come to be? Because yesterday you sent me an, a, like a news release that your dad's facility is being search, searched by the, the authorities? Um, honestly, we are TikTok. We went to TikTok and um, all of us just started speaking out. Um, a deputy within that department actually contacted me because we had tried um, con contacting the sheriff's department multiple times. Um, and never got a call back, never got, not just me, but multiple people never got calls back, called back. Um, so this deputy reached out to me, gave me his personal cell phone, and he basically just started taking all of our statements. And, um, sometime July, June or July, um, a girl got kicked in the head by a horse, um, I read it, it was on a Facebook status that this dad who got his daughter out a couple of months ago, she witnessed this and it says, um, while she was there, a girl got kicked in the head by a horse and she ran across the street to tell my parents what happened. And basically by the time my parents got over there, um, the girl was screaming in pain, crying. And my dad told her if she didn't shut up, he was gonna slap her and run her over with her four wheeler. Um, Whoa. This girl, yeah. <laughs> This girl ended up um, having surgery, and um, from what I was told by a parent, they another parent contacted CPS in their state about the situation, and um, that state got in contact with Missouri. Well, um, back in March or April, a girl reached out to us through TikTok and asked if she could start a petition. And so we said yes, and that petition has like almost 300,000 signatures. So, um, so you're basically like, just to back up here, you go to TikTok because nobody's listening to you. Correct. You have nobody taking you seriously. You have all of these people that have come to you. You have left this world. You're, you've gone to your own therapy realizing like how messed up all of this is. You've got other people, survivors coming to you. You guys all start sharing your stories. I heard about this because my subscribers were like, you have to go to TikTok. These videos are horrible. It sounds like Hepzibah House, which is another home of Christian under the IFB as well. Similar 
in nature. And they said this, they need help. And I was like, so overwhelmed. But so your TikTok, how many people are following that TikTok? Um, two hundred and fifty-two point four thousand followers. So you were getting good momentum, but now you're not, obviously. So more and more people start sharing their stories. You have a YouTube channel where people are now sharing their stories. People that were at the school that are deeply affected by what your parents have done, and at some point they remove a bunch of girls from this house. August 14th and 15th, they, remain, they removed 23 girls. And then September 1st, they, they served the search warrants. So they removed, so, after, so it's basically the incident of the girls with the girl getting her kicked by the horse that results in a lot of this happening. Is that? Yes. Okay. Um, but it wasn't, uh, I don't know how to explain it. I think we weren't getting any, like no one was hearing us. Um, and so I think if this happened and none of us spoke out, it would not have gone as far because of how many multiple times it's been um, hidden under the rug. This isn't the first time someone has been seriously injured here. Um, this is just the first time that it's been um, everyone together speaking out on it. and everyone hearing us if that makes sense so um when this incident happened um the sheriff's department already knew about our because we gave statements after statements after statements uh, we had like i want to say 20 plus girls from 2006 on give statements um so honestly it, i i do believe if it weren't for TikTok, it would still be going the way it was going so now there's nobody at this facility. Nobody, nobody is there. And your dad is, I'm assuming, under investigation for something? He is under investigation for child abuse and um, inappropriate conduct with young women and minors. How many people do you think he did that to? I talked to at least five. Five girls that he was inappropriate with? So this... Multiple, I was going to say multiple women didn't even know each other. Like, So this was like a facility that your dad started so that he could have... It was like a candy store for him. Yes. He had zero interest in helping them get better... It was to collect money and have access to these girls. Correct. And then no one would believe them because they're troubled teens. Yeah, and that's exactly what their lawyer says. Like says, you cannot believe them because these girls have a troubled past. So it's like the perfect victim. Yeah, it really is. So your dad's like a psychopath. He, he is a psycho. So is there any, like, how does it feel now knowing that all of this work that you've been doing to spread awareness is helping to, like, actually see things happening? It's honestly, it's, it, it's really, it's relieving. Um, I'm just worried because I feel my parents deserve jail time. I do feel like they need to be behind bars because it's been 23 plus years of them doing this um i'm just afraid that it's not going to go anywhere and they're going to just be able to up and move to a different state and start another school so i mean if that happens i'm still going to continue and i'll find them and i'll continue to speak and i will continue to share um but i'm just i'm just afraid that that's going to happen have you, do you have any idea what the investigators, like, is there any, have they given you any hope that they will arrest your father? Arrest? No. Um, they have given me hope that they would shut the school down. Um, arrest? I don't know how to explain it other than it's just a small town. Um, 
public attorney in a small town um, sheriff's department. So like, um, according to the sheriff that's been working with me, the public attorney just looking at it as how can I defend them rather than how can I um, defend these girls. Uh, he's not looking at it as, as a public attorney way. He's looking at it as a defense way. Um, I do feel like it's a lot of the religious laws and they're afraid that they're not going to be able to um, prosecute them because of the laws in Missouri. The laws in Missouri do protect religious established, uh, establishments just like in Indiana um, with the Hisbezba House situation. Uh, a lot of these schools move to those areas because if you are a religious organization, it's a lot harder for the state to come in and do anything. That's why they're all in Utah too. Yes. So Missouri, Indiana, and Utah just allow people to do whatever they want and nobody gets held accountable. Well, well that's you. what is the search warrant? I mean, any idea what they're looking for? Um, I know that they took out um, dogs that sniff out for electronics. My thought is um, there's been multiple girls that have said, when I was there, there was no camera but there have been multiple girls that have said that he has hidden cameras places. And so I think they were looking for those hidden cameras. Um, multiple, well, not multiple girls. Um, one girl has come forward with her, um, her abuse story and has said that my dad made her watch something with him while he did things to her. Yes. And, um, so I think they're looking for that kind of stuff. So evidence of these acts. Uh, okay. Yes, a lot of us are running up against um, statutes of limitations. Um, five years is for physical and mental abuse uh, within the state. Um, most of the girls he waited until they were 18. And there are statutes of limitations for that. And I think it's um, two years in Missouri. Um, one girl, um, she was underage, and she there's no statutes of limitations for that. And yeah. So the goal of all of this for you is what? I want to see them never allowed to be in charge of any other child. Um, like I said, it's been way too long. They've been in charge of children way too long. Um, these are other people's kids and no other. I just, it's just, I don't know how to explain it. It's just heartbreaking to me that I'm out. I'm 18 or I'm not 18. I'm 29. I'm out. I don't have to live that anymore. My youngest brother is 20. He's out. He doesn't have to live this anymore. But they're still doing because they're still in charge of other kids. And honestly, they should never be allowed to be around kids again. So with the children that are, so you want the kids removed and you'd love, you want your parents held accountable. Correct. Yeah. But we're not sure if that's going to happen. No. Yeah. At least they did the search warrant. That's the step in the right direction. That was, um, it was a total shock. Honestly, it was a total shock when I found out that they did the search warrant. I was just like, what? Like, oh, okay. Like, I don't know how to explain it because I don't know. It was just. So what are you uh, like, what is your goal with all of this advocacy that you're doing? What do you hope to accomplish by sharing stories with the survivors? Um, I honestly, cause I grew up in multiple of these schools. Um, I just want to spread awareness. I want to help spread awareness the trouble teen industry. I want to get some sort of reform within these schools. If not, it just completely demolished because I am biased and I don't like it. Um, but if anything, I would like to see it reformed. Um, I'm not gonna stop once Circle of Hope is shut down. I've already been helping other survivors like try to like share their stories. I've been getting in, them into contact with other survivors that like share podcasts and stuff like that. Um, 
we, myself and five other survivors of Circle of Hope got together and started um, an organization called Exposing Circle of Hope. And um, we're going to be getting um, a um, funding together for people who struggle with um, wanting to end their life and um, homelessness. Homelessness is a huge, huge, huge issue within these trouble teen industries because a lot of the times the um, places destroy the relationship between parent and child, so the child has nowhere to go after they're 18. Um, I know multiple girls, including myself, went homeless, and so we want to be able to, um, we want to be able to help, I know we can't end it, but we want to be able to help end homelessness within the trouble teen industry because we all know what this is like and um so our goal would be to help get this teenager that is being kicked out and has nowhere to go into a place until they can get a job and then onto their feet and um into their own um residence um and then the mental health fund will be obviously for um anyone who needs help with getting therapy and um a regular therapist so and so you're sharing these stories on your the youtube channel exposing circle of hope as well yes ma'am which has i a few thousand subscribers for four five thousand subscribers i think roughly four thousand yeah so obviously growing that would help with your um so are, is the revenue made from that channel to help this as well? Yes, that's actually why we named the organization Exposing Circle of Hope because the YouTube channel is that. We're just, the organization is the YouTube channel. Okay. So are there ways for people to, how can people help you guys like either by raising money or like what is it that, what is like a good call to action for people? Like how can they help you with your mission? Um, right now we have a GoFundMe. Um, we did raise enough money to pay for the 501c3 and we're just, we already put that paperwork. We're just waiting on the paperwork getting back. Um, so right now we're just taking donations through um, the GoFundMe. Um, but we also have a petition um, that we would really appreciate people um, if people sign the petition because um, I don't know how petitions work. I just know that after it gets so many, it's supposed to go directly to the governor of Missouri. So um, we're almost there. I think we're at 300, almost to 300,000 signatures. So we can share the petition. Um, we can share your GoFundMe. People should check out your channel um, and subscribe to learn more about this because your channel is filled with stories. It, it, it is it, uh, not just people from Circle of Hope. There are other girls from um, other schools as well and boys from Agape as well. So with the goal of shutting down these types of facilities. Correct. And what would you tell a parent about thinking about sending a child to one of these facilities? Um, I would say I would never personally send my child to a place but like I said, I am biased because I grew up in a couple of different ones and they all basically were the same. But if you were, um, if they do not allow you to contact your child whenever you want, don't send them there. Um, they're still your children. You should have access to them 24 seven. You should be allowed to break a contract. You should be allowed to show up when your child needs you because a lot of these places isolate children to interrupt your relationship with them. Like, I would say 90% of children that go through the troubled teen industry have no relationship with their parents afterwards. So, on purpose? On purpose. Most of them refuse to talk to their parents. And it's not, I do feel like the parents are just as much a victim because their parents, a lot of the parents feel they need help for their kids. Like, a lot of them, um, have like I said earlier some are court ordered there so they have no choice for one but a lot of them do have like anger issues and they need help um but you're they're isolating your children they're making your children um they're breaking your children 
for it. And then afterwards, they just want nothing to do with them because one, they are like, you put me here. I'm not a, I'm not a survivor of the troubled teen industry. I went through it as a staff child, if that makes sense. But I can say that I have watched multiple friends after friend after friend refuse to talk to their parents because they feel their parents put them there and their parents knew. Um, a lot of the parents did not know. A lot of parents feel so bad after finding out. I do feel like a lot of parents are just as much victims as the child. Um, and it's sad because the child, now adult, is still heartbroken because their relationship was destroyed. Because the people who their parents entrusted destroyed their childhood, basically. So your dad is not only destroying people's lives, he's destroying their families. Correct. Your dad's a predator. He is. Well, I would like to continue um, to keep these lines of communication open because this is a dialogue that I feel like is so important. And I want to continue to use my platform to help build awareness because no child or parent, parents need to know that these places exist and need to be warned because it's the parents that are putting them there. They need to know what their kid they're putting their child into. Nobody wants to talk about these kids because they think that they're trouble, but they're just kids that needed help. Yeah, they are just kids that needed help. If you would like to help Amanda and her mission to end these schools, please do me a favor and sign her petition, as well as consider donating to her GoFundMe, which will help her organization get off their feet. And of course, please go and subscribe to her channel and watch some of these stories of these survivors and know that there are there's no reason at all for these organizations to exist. If you are a parent, please do not send your child to any school that does not allow you to have access to your child. No child should go into a facility for reform and come out needing more help. I want to thank Amanda so much for joining me. I will put all the links in my description box where you can find out and learn more all about Circle of Hope. All right, you guys, I'll be back later with more. Bye.